We are at Baba Blacktail Farm with everyone's favorite shepherdess, Tess. Today, Tess, what are we doing today? Well, today we are doing the crotching or the crutching, whichever you want to look at it. What we're doing actually is we're cleaning up the ewes and making sure that the babies won't have any trouble finding the teeth. We don't want them um, latching on to a wool tag. Most of the Katahdins that I have are all clean in their undercarriage, but because I have a couple of them, about five, that have 50% or more of the East Frisian dairy sheep, the dairy sheep are a wool breed, and so sometimes there's some residual wool around the udder area. And we're going to crutch with the shears to clean around to make sure that they're, they're ready for lambing, which is going to begin in about two weeks. This morning when I looked at the thermometer and it was four degrees at home, I thought, oh, it's the day that Dan's gonna film. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and you're not taking into account the wind. Oh, yeah, yeah. With that, I think you're in like negative right. 10, negative <laughs> right. somewhere around there with the wind chill. So Tess, what do we need to do now? We have the, we have the sheep in here. What do we need to do next in the process? Um, I want to put them up into the, the um, stanchion so that that will hold the front end to them and then I can trim their hind end. Now we can begin the real work is to just clear off the hair that's around here that might confuse the baby. You'll notice it's, there's a lot of real dirty hair. I like to clean a little bit of that away. And the, it, with the shears, it's a lot easier to go into the clean hair. If you try to cut the dirty hair, it, it really doesn't cut. You know, it just won't go through. My hands are so cold. <laughs> and these are dull. <laughs> Just so that there's nothing hanging, you know, where where it's going to confuse the baby or be in the way of the birthing. So that's it? She's all done? Yeah. <laughs> because the object is just to keep, you know, just to make sure that this area doesn't have any tags. I mean, ideally, if it was nice and warm and, and and I wanted to take the time, I would take all this clean. Originally, I got three Frisians in order to have <laughs> milk in advance uh, so that I would have milk replacer in case there would be a mama who couldn't feed her baby for some reason, <laughs> then I would be able to um, have milk from a sheep rather than, you know, powder. Some of the powders are great, but, you know, <laughs> they have the real deal. So here's what we're talking about when we say a wool tag. So baby looking for the udder, is going to come around here, maybe, you know, latch on to this. And you think, well, how could they be that stupid? But we're just trying to make everything easy for them. And it, besides that, it's kind of ugly having it hanging down there. So we're just going to take that off. And like we talked about earlier, sometimes they're they're closer to the tee and then yeah. covered yeah. in either manure or mud. Right. So and you just, just want to get that clean. to be clean and easy. And, and that's about all she needs because she's totten and so she... She has a nice clean undercarriage. See, she's got kind of a wide tail that comes down to one. And um, you'll notice that some of the Frisians, they have a tail that's kind of like a cat. It's as small here and small. You know, it's the same. Uh, tails are very different. And everyone says, oh, your sheep have tails. I said, yeah, I came that way. <laughs>
a little boy. <laughs> What's up, big boy? We are joined by Tess from Baba Blacktail Farm. She is here to bring home her breeding ram that she yeah. loaned us. He's four years old now. He was uh, just a young boy. He came to you the first breeding year. And uh, he was he went to you as number 708 young ram lamb for breeding and you named him Rambo man and he is the man he is the top hello guy look at you oh. this is checkers checkers is two years old he is east frisian and dorper with a quarter katana so he he has a really long body and he puts a lot of money in his loins he just gets some wool, but it sheds off. Um, and his, of course, sheds off. And he's got a wonderfully sweet disposition. So he weighs about 175, he weighs 225. Oh. Hi, George. Long time no see. Brutus Livingston. Remember, he was born only in April. Okay. And this is Ivan. He is the son of Horace, who's out on a rent around. And he was also born in April. So you can see the difference. That's a normal size, born in April. This is a big guy, born in April. And he is, he's a new young fellow. So remember when we talked about the dynamics of the, uh, the conformation of a sheep? And we looked at the breeding stock and we talked about how um, we want them to be kind of like a milk bottle turned on its side and so forth. If you can get a look at him, he is the, just that. He, ha he has all this nice, I'll just get <laughs> He has got the configuration that we really want in our use that like a milk bottle turned on its side so he's broad in the back and very deep and he's only born in april so he's not even a year old and look at he's nearly the size of these guys that are two years old so he's very promising and that's why i went all the way to yellowstone national park area to get him and I checked out his mom and his grandma, and they are the grand dames. They've been around for a long time, and you know the, the adage, you're either good or you're delicious. So I like to get uh, a sheep that came out of a, a, a keeper, one who's been a keeper, and her mom's a keeper.